up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold penny i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2021 nissan rogue sport courtesy of hanover nissan in hanover pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so i wanted to hop in this one today because this is an affordable small suv with all-wheel drive available they don't all come with all-wheel drive at this price range and this is actually expected to be the last generation before the complete redesign so the question really becomes are you going to wait for the 2022 model year or are you going to try to take advantage of probably some really good pricing here on the 2021s like we have today here so in this video i will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2021 rogue sport first one being the s starting at twenty three thousand nine hundred and sixty dollars sv for twenty five thousand five hundred and thirty dollars and lastly the one we have today being the sl starting at twenty eight thousand five hundred and ninety dollars and by the way all of that pricing was for the front wheel drive configuration if you wanted to add all wheel drive you can do that but simply add fourteen hundred dollars to any of those prices but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the rogue sport will be the same powering this little beast is a two liter direct injected inline four cylinder putting out 141 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 147 pound feet of torque coming in at 4400 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a cvt giving Giving you a zero to 60 time approximately 9.8 seconds you guys know we will test that out in a little bit here but mpg numbers coming in at 25 in the city 32 on the highway for the front wheel drive 24 in the city 30 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel but so that before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in a rogue sport i do want to mention there are two driving modes for the rogue sport it of course is normal but in addition to that there is also eco and sport both of those drive mode buttons are located just by the drive driver's left knee there and so essentially they will adjust things like the shift points the throttle response and actually the steering sensitivity as well so having said that I'm going to go ahead and hit that sport button here we're going to go ahead and find a straightaway and let's put this thing to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2021 rogue sport here up to speed all right in three two one off we go All right, so it's not the quickest thing in the world. And honestly, zero to 60 and 9.8, if I'm being honest, is quite slow. But anyways, it will do the trick. If you were to merge onto the highway, that is what that sport driving mode is for. So definitely go ahead and hit that button. And that is what we actually had it in there too, but still kind of slow, but nonetheless, it'll get the job done, I suppose. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.7 inch ventilated front discs in the back 11.5 inch solid rear discs as far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes actually comes in at 123 feet which is plenty respectable and as far as the braking feel goes that is definitely perfectly fine as well there's no dead spots in the braking or anything like that touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent strut type front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars and as far as ride quality goes so we're hitting probably the bumpiest roads here in Pennsylvania it's actually it's not bad it's doing all right definitely no issues there I've felt worse I gotta be honest as far as ride quality goes so really it's not all that bad for me as far as steering feel goes let me put it in that sport driving mode one more time it's definitely on the loosey-goosey side without a doubt so wouldn't have minded a bit of a heavier feel to the steering if I'm being honest just because it better helps put you in the direction that you want to go it gives you a better driving feel overall so We'll just say a lot of SUVs do give you this, which is definitely a looser steering feel in the Rogue Sport without a doubt. But touching on cabin noise, it is perfectly fine. It's pretty much average for the segment. You get a little bit of road noise, not a whole lot of wind noise though, I will say that. So that is definitely a good thing. And touching on visibility, that is excellent. I can see perfectly fine out the back out of my rear view mirror. So that is definitely very much so on point here in our Rogue Sport. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2021 nissan rogue sport 
All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 Nissan Rogue Sport, finished in Monarch Orange, which, by the way, is a $395 paint option if you were interested. But if you are into Monarch Butterflies, this may just be the option for you. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Chrome V-Motion front grille does come standard across the board. To the sides, halogen headlights come standard on every single trim level, actually. However, we do have some different headlights, and I'll get to that in a second. But automatic feature does come standard as well. LED daytime running lights also coming standard across the board. Fog lights coming standard with the SV trim level and that is going to be optional on the SL like we have today here. So that is what you guys are seeing towards the bottom there. And LED headlights, which is what we have today, is going to be optional on the SL. So we do have a package option that does include them along with the power moonroof and a couple other things as well. So I did want to mention that you guys are looking at LED headlights right now, but that about rounds out the front. Let's go ahead and take a look at the side of the Rogue Sport here. So, but now since we are around to this side, aluminum roof rails do come standard on the SV and SL trim levels. Chrome window surrounds coming standard across the board. When it comes to these side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors for all trim levels with integrated turn signals if you were to go with the SV or SL. Those two trims are also going to give you then heated side mirrors as well. And then just below, I did want to mention matte black side skirts do come standard on the Rogue Sport. You also get approach lighting for every single trim level across the board, which I thought was pretty cool. Then take a look at the wheel setup, 17 inch aluminum alloys coming with the S and SV trims. And then that will jump up to 18 inch aluminum alloys for the SL. And that is currently what you guys are looking at right now, of course. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the Rogue Sport. So now since we are around back, you will find a rear spoiler with an integrated brake light up top, just below that rear window wiper. You do actually have trim level badging for all trim levels for the Rogue Sport. So if you happen to wander onto a Nissan lot and you were trying to distinguish which trim level you were looking at, it is pretty easy. The trim level badging is going to be on the rear lift gate there, but just below it all, you will find a matte black rear bumper and a hidden single exhaust outlet. So I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So but now since we are around back of the Rogue Sport, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a manual lift gate across the board to so simply just lift up underneath the back there. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 20 cubic feet for the SV and SL and then 22.9 cubic feet for the S trim level. So you're actually going to get slightly more space there if you were to go with that S trim level. And that's going to continue even with the rear seats down coming in at 53.3 cubic feet for the SV and SL and then a substantial difference. 61.1 cubic feet then for the S. I don't know why, but you do get quite a bit more space with the S trim level as opposed to the SV and SL. But anyways, when you fold those rear seats down, it is a 60-40 split. In case anybody was curious, there were actually six cargo tie-down anchors in the cargo section as well. Cargo cover coming with the SV and SL trims. There is a divide and hide cargo system for the SV and SL, essentially meaning in-floor storage, which is pretty darn cool. There's also a little bit of storage to the left and the right in the back there as well, which is indented, which I thought was pretty cool. And of course, you got some cargo lighting and a couple grocery bag hooks then back there there as well but then make your way to the rear legroom that comes in at 33.4 inches rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard across the board gotta love that there is some rear ventilation for those rear passengers back there then as well however no rear usb charging ports or any kind of charging ports for that matter so kind of disappointed there but all in all, still love the rear center armrest with cup holders back there. But anyways, now let's go ahead and make our way to the front seats. Manually adjustable cloth seating with the S trim level. Eight-way power driver's seat with two-way power lumbar for the SV and SL. Premium cloth seating for the SV trim level. Leather seating then for the SL. You will actually get heated front seats for the SV and SL trims. Overall, seats are definitely very comfortable. I have I would have no issues whatsoever going for a long road trip here in the Rogue Sport. So pretty darn comfortable seating if you ask me. But then let's take a look at the steering wheel. It's a pretty cool layout here. Tilt and telescoping, of course. Leather wrapped for the SV and SL. Heated 
for the SV and SL. And you gotta love the flat bottom steering wheel. Definitely gives it more of a sportier look since we do have the Rogue Sport after all. So a pretty darn cool look to the steering wheel in my personal opinion. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. All of your buttons are located on one side of the key. Lock, unlock, and that circular button. That is actually going to be a remote start, which you get on the SV and SL trim level. So therefore you're able to warm this thing up on super cold days here in Pennsylvania like we quite often get, but not today. It's actually 70s today, so digging it. But anyways, push button start is going to come on those two trim levels as well, SV and SL. So all I'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the right of the gauges there. And then, so once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a small digital display front and center. To control what is on that digital display, simply use the steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel. And that is going to give you a ton of different information, ton of safety features, outside temperature. You can choose to display a digital speedometer up there if you wanted to, trip A, trip B. How many miles you have left until you hit empty? There's actually traffic sign recognition giving you the speed limit of any given road as well all of that is very cool but pretty much everything you could possibly want up on the gauges there but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality power moonroof is going to be optional for the SL trim level only we of course do have that option this is a premium package by the way I don't think I said that yet premium package is the option that we have it goes for around $2,300 ish I think it's $2,280 to be exact but gives you a ton of things one of them being the power moonroof over overhead sunglass holder comes standard on every single trim level across the board auto dimming rear view mirror with home light controls coming for the sl i love that we have that today specifically for the home light controls because it's so much better than the rattling garage door opener but having said that there is a cable that they probably could have integrated into the rear view mirror itself so it's not exposed and just hanging out there but other than that i do like that it is there nonetheless Dual zoom climate control coming standard on the SL trim level only. Love the piano black accents around the infotainment screen continuing on just above the passenger side glove box and then it actually continues on to the doors as well. And it is also surrounding the shifter here. So I do like that too. And speaking of, just in front of the shifter, you have a little bit of storage there. 12 volt power outlet, USB charging port, auxiliary port, and electromechanical parking brake. That is pretty cool. Just behind the shifter, dual cup holders. You have heated seat buttons little bit of storage there within the center armrest definitely a good bit more storage it's actually a couple of uh, attachment devices on the back side of that for pens or pencils you have a USB charging port in here, 12 volt power outlet as well. You don't always get that, so that's pretty cool. But anyways, interior quality is finished pretty much as I would expect it to be. Not the very highest materials, of course, but it'll certainly get the job done without a doubt. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. Seven inch color touchscreen display coming standard for every single trim level. Bluetooth audio streaming coming standard. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay also standard for all trims. You gotta love that factory navigation system coming with the SL trim level only, although you really don't need it as long as you have a smartphone because of Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. And of course, you can check out your radio information up there as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them for the Rogue Sport. Four speakers is going to come with the S, then SV and SL trims are going to give you a six speaker sound system. But having said that, there is actually an optional Bose sound system that we do happen to have here today. So that's part of the premium package as well. But what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning. And let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely not too bad, and I love Bose sound systems, honestly. I had one in my Infinity back in the day, never failed me. I loved it, ton of bass, pretty good clarity, so definitely no issues with that sound system. More of enough of a sound system for the size of the Rogue Sport, without a doubt. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Rogue Sport in reverse, you of course will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. But in addition to that, if you were to go with the SL trim that we have today, you also get a 360 degree monitor. That's gonna be the angle on the right hand side of the screen there. And that is pretty cool. But anyways, that is always is going to lead us in this safety. And so to start front side, side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure, 
pressure monitoring system, but the good stuff, there's actually quite a bit of advanced safety features coming standard across the board for every single trim level. And that is going to include automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning, intelligent lane intervention, blind spot warning with rear cross traffic alert, high beam assist, I personally love that one, but reverse automatic braking and lane keep assist then as well. And then the SL trim level is going to add to that a driver attention monitoring system and adaptive cruise control then as well. And so overall the question circling back to the beginning of the video there, do you buy this one now? Probably save yourself a ton of money or do you wait for the 2022 redesign of the Rogue Sport? Because from what I've seen online, it is going to look strikingly similar to the redesigned Nissan Rogue, which looks dang good in my personal opinion. So there's that. Also, the new Rogue has digital gauges available, which I think may be carried on to the Rogue Sport here as well in the next generation. And I would imagine with it being the trend, the Rogue Sport is probably going to get slightly larger in size as well, giving you not only more cargo space, but rear legroom then as well for right around the same price point, I would imagine. But again, the trade-off being you're going to get some wonderful deals more than likely on this 2021 Rogue Sport. And this thing, quite honestly, the selling point to me is the safety, which is where it really matters most in SUVs in the end, because you're more than likely going to have kids in the back anyways. And safety is brilliant on this thing. But let me know in the comments what you guys think of this one. Let me know if you're going to get the 2022 or the 2021 Rogue Sport. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. If you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know when I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.